Welcome to the Autodesk Fusion 360 What's New in Manufacturing for November. This release brings a whole host of new features and previews that focus on process automation to help increase your manufacturing throughput and improve your time to market. So let's take a look. Now in a break from tradition, I'm going to start this What's New video with preview features. And the reason for this is we have some big developments on the horizon. Earlier this year, we announced a partnership with ModuleWorks and nine months later, we are ready to push out into the extension preview the first toolpaths that utilize the ModuleWorks engine. First is Rotary Pocket, a four axis roughing strategy that allows you to remove material from cylindrical, conical and freeform parts rotating around a fourth axis, meaning you can tackle more complex geometry compared to a four axis wrap. Complementing the Rotary Pocket strategy is the Rotary Contour strategy, which is a four axis simultaneous strategy designed to finish machine the sidewalls of features which radiate from the central axis of a part. Both rotary pocket and rotary contour strategies support flat end mills, ball nose and bull nose tool types and have a range of options to control the toolpath such as boundary limits, ordering options, rest machining and automatic shaft and holder clearance checking. These options are designed to optimize cutting conditions to prolong tool life and help minimize overall machining cycle time. The combination of rotary pocket and rotary contour alongside the existing rotary toolpath means that Fusion 360 will provide a more efficient solution for the machining of four axis parts. This is further helped by a third new module work strategy coming into extension preview called D-Burr. This intelligent toolpath automatically removes the small burrs that are often left on the edges of parts after machining. Deburr works by identifying sharp edges or small radii on parts and then producing toolpaths to remove a small amount of material from edges using three, four or five axis machine motion. This removes the reliance on manual deburring, resulting in increased throughput and an improvement in part quality. The strategy supports many different types of cutting tool, including end mills, tapered, conical or chamfered tools but works particularly well when combined with ball nose or lollipop cutters, especially using five axis machining. Users have control over which edges need to be machined and which ones should be ignored, with additional controls for edge type, minimum edge angle and tool orientation. There are also additional clearance height controls using automatic, planar, cylindrical or spherical options to define a safe area that the cutting tool will withdraw to between cuts. One important thing to note on these new module work strategies is how we've integrated them into Fusion 360, incorporating the same user experience as the other toolpath strategy dialogues, meaning that no matter which toolpath engine is being used, the experience is the same and therefore easier to learn. Remember, these features are an extension preview. And whilst we have been running these in our Birmingham Technology Center, this release provides you with an opportunity to experiment with the new functionality on a wider variety of parts and to provide feedback to us so we can make further improvements ready for release. Outside of the module work strategy integration, another addition coming into the extension preview is the new option to machine inclined flats within the flat finishing strategy. Designed to automate the programming of flat model regions, the machine inclined flats option automatically detects flat faces within a specified angular range and applies a flat finishing toolpath to each of those regions using a multi-axis simultaneous motion to move between the flat areas, creating a single toolpath. Compared to separate flat finishing operations where each toolpath would need to be aligned to each individual face, this increased automation reduces the chances of missing model faces during programming and subsequently reduces the time it takes to program flat finishing operations. Moving on to preview features, we have a big improvement to machine simulation. It's only been a year since we fully released machine simulation in Fusion 360 and development has continued with the addition of collision detection. This allows you to identify collisions during simulation between the components of the machine and your parts, fixtures, tools, tool holders and in-process stock, as well as collisions between different parts of the machine itself, such as a collision between the head and the table of a five axis machine. Collision detection aims to improve confidence in your machining operations allowing issues to be found early in the process in the digital environment and rectified quickly before they become expensive. And once issues have been resolved, simulation can be performed again to verify 
before sending your part to the machine. Lastly, we have a preview for the additive build extension, whereby additive process simulation results will save with the Fusion 360 document on the cloud. This means users can simulate a part on one computer, save the document and then open the part on another computer and still have access to their additive manufacturing process simulation results, removing the need to regenerate them. As ever with all preview features, switch them on and let us know your feedback in the Fusion 360 forum. So what about the features getting a full release in November? Continuing the additive theme, we've focused our efforts on supporting additional Selective Laser Sintering or SLS printers. This release includes four new printers from Sinterit in the machine library, allowing you to 3D arrange and print your parts with common thermoplastic materials like those which are polypropylene, polyamide and polyurethane based. For HP multi-jet fusion printing, we have also made an update to the app interface. Once downloaded from the Autodesk App Store, any additive setups which call for a HP printer will instigate a new panel called HP where the commands can be found. Users then have the option to send to the HP SmartStream 3D Build Manager or connect directly to the printer and start the printing process from within Fusion 360, streamlining the process of printing parts on your HP printers. Coming out of preview and into full release is an enhancement to the steep and shallow strategy, aimed at improving the quality of surface finishes. In shallow regions where the tool is able to enter from the outside, the new Optimize Open Pockets option can generate scallop toolpath segments with a shape that is not only influenced by the surrounding steep region, but which also enters and exits the material from the outside in. This new option produces a toolpath with open passes that tend to have fewer changes in direction when compared to closed segments, reducing the likelihood of dwell marks being left on the part. This helps improve surface finish and avoids the need for costly manual polishing or rework. Additionally, this new option can also reduce full width cuts, meaning better tool life. For inspection, also moving out of public preview and into full release is the option to allow the manual measurement of the distance between a reference plane and the circular profile of either a boss or hole. Measurements can be derived from either a direct measurement or from maximum or minimum distances, increasing the options available for you to check your parts for compliance to reduce scrap rates. And that's everything for this November release video. Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.